Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, no. Your past. Rise and walk with me. Bear but a touch of my hand there, and you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either hand. The city had entirely vanished. Not a vestige of it was to be seen. The darkness and the mist had vanished with it, for it was a clear, cold winter day with snow upon the ground. They walked along the road, Scrooge recognizing every gate and post and tree, until a little market town appeared in the distance, with its bridge, its church, and winding river. Some shaggy ponies now were seen trotting toward them with boys upon their backs, who called to other boys in country gigs and carts, driven by farmers. All these boys were in great spirits and shouted to each other until the broad fields were so full of merry music that the crisp air laughed to hear it. These are but shadows of the things that have been. They have no consciousness to us. The school was not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, is left there still. They went, the ghost and Scrooge, across the hall to a door at the back of the house, and it opened before them and disclosed a long, bare, melancholy room made bare still by the lines of Plaindale forms and desks. And at one of these, a lonely boy was reading near a feeble fire, and Scrooge sat upon a form and wept to see his poor forgotten self as he used to be. Poor boy. Poor, poor boy. I I wish... No, it's too late now. What is the matter? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. I... Uh, there was a boy singing a Christmas carol at, at my door last night. I, I should like to have given him something. That, that's all. Let us see another Christmas. I've come to bring you home, dear brother, to bring you home, home, home. Home, little fan? Yes, home for good and all, home forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one dear night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should, and sent me in a coach to bring you. And we're to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in all the world. You are quite the woman, little fan. Always a delicate creature whom a breath might have withered. But she had a large heart. She died a woman and had, as I think, children. One child. True. Your nephew. Yo ho there, Ebenezer, Dick, my boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick, Christmas, Ebenezer. Why, it's old Fezziwig, bless his heart. Fezziwig, alive again. Let's have the shutters up before a man can say Jack Robinson. It was done in a minute. Every movable was packed off as if it were dismissed from public life forevermore. The floor was swept and watered, the lamps were trimmed, fuel was heaped upon the fire, and the warehouse was as snug and warm and dry and bright as a ballroom, as one would desire to see upon a winter's night. In they all came, one after another, some shyly, some boldly, some gracefully, some awkwardly, some pushing and some pulling. In they all came, anyhow and everyhow. There were more dances, and there were forfeits, and more dances, and there was cake, and there was a great piece of cold roast, and there was a piece of cold boiled, and there were mince pies, and plenty of beer. So what does Bell mean? Bell means beautiful. Well, that sure is uh, appropriately named. <laughs> 